Hi, my name is Matt, and today we're going to be going through a tutorial of how to do skin tones on Vi from Nom Nom Studios. Uh, I did this on stream, and I had a ton of fun chatting with all the people who are in that Discord, and you'll find the links in the description below. But today we're going to have a good look of how I do female skin tones on faces, so let's get to it. So I'm going to begin by undercoating the face with some magenta and as you can see kind of already in the video what I always do is I test my paint on the nail on my thumb just to make sure I get the consistency right so um, I was explaining that basically if you get paint really really thick like that on your thumb like it is there that's probably going to be too thick for what you want to do so the whole thing today is very very thin paints um, I'm going to start with an undercoat of Magenta by Chimera Coolers. Um, I really, really like that as an undercoat for skin tone because later when you build it up, you kind of get a little bit of a, a paler skin. But the whole first part that we're going to do here is just some very thin glazing of that color over the face to build it up. So you can see it dried there. Um, it looks really nice as uh, the first layer. And then I kind of went on and explained how if you put down too thick of a layer, basically after that, what's going to happen is you're basically going to lose all the color underneath. So again, this is going to be a start of um, what I do is a little bit of uh, basic skin tone and some flat flesh tone to get a nice kind of dark tone to start off with. And again, I'm just thinning it down with some water um, so that it goes on nice and thin so we don't cover up uh, the majority of the magenta. Yeah, after one pass, you can see that we're still mostly seeing the undercoat of magenta, which is really nice. But also now that we have a little bit of a layer of skin on top, and I'm just going to put on more and more layers of just thin, um, basic skin tone and flat flesh tone just to build up the color.
And now that we have a solid base coat, basically what I'm going to do is start working up my highlights and building up the tones gradually and gradually so the skin looks a little bit lighter and it's starting to look more like skin tone. So we'll be adding just some basic skin tone here and again just thin layers all the time until it ever so slightly covers the layer below.
So with a nice established base and a highlight, what I actually did next was I went down in color. So using a light enough brown added to the previous um, layer of skin tone, just some basic flesh tone, I create kind of the shadow color that's going to go into all the dark areas. And I'm basically picking out the points on the model in and around the nose, underneath it, underneath the chin specifically as well, where there's going to be a lot of shadows. And again, the whole main point of this is just that always have these paints so thin. You shouldn't be able to cover the previous layer. This shouldn't take one pass of paint. It should take maybe two or three to get a nice, consistent color. And again, I work down a little bit darker again. I wasn't happy with how dark the initial color was, so I just added a little bit of a darker Mourn Found Brown. And um, after that, what you will see is that I went quite extreme to where the darkest of shadows are to really bring up the contrast was with a bit of like Rhinox Hide. Now, the problem that happened was it was actually too much. But always with these things, just be prepared and be ready. So I just washed away the majority of it. And I don't really need to worry because with all of these things, if you do make mistakes, so long as you have your paint ready, you can just go over the previous step, which is what I did with um, basic skin tone just to cover up the mistake. So my final point here on the skin is that I use basically a very small amount of light flesh tone kind of stippled on just to make extreme contrast in the eyes and where her cheeks are going to be hitting the light the most. So when it comes to eyes, what I like to do is I don't start with pure white because I like to work up. And if you ever look at your eyes and notice the color of your eyes, it's not pure white it's a lot of gray unless you're obviously directly in sunlight so what i do is i work up from gray and i make sure the entire pupil gets shaded in a very light gray uh next a little thing i like to do is i take any red any vibrant red color you have thin it down to a very 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 thin wash and then I just drop it into the eye to give kind of a redness around that really makes it pop. After that's done, I start adding in white and basically painting the eye as normal. Um, once the white is in, I, depending on the color of the eye, I will basically go for the darkest shade first, in this case for Violet's blue. And then I work up kind of the tone, just hitting the bottom of the eye so that you get maximum contrast. And then once that's done, Basically, you can add a tiny little dot of white into each of the corners of the bottom of the eye to really make it seem reflective. And then, obviously, just very carefully with a fine tip of your brush, a small dot of black just to bring the pupil back.
So a big part of Revi is freehand tattooing. And basically for this, I follow uh, Vince Venturella's tutorial on hobby cheating tattoos, which is a really, really good video. Um, I'll have a link to it up above in the video. But basically I take um, any kind of acrylic ink. In my case, it's Liquitex and it's the black of it. Uh, mix it in with any black paint that you have and for a little bit of blending with the skin tone you can add some kind of dark blues to it as well and for this the important part is, is to have make sure you have a very very fine tip on your brush and that you get a nice flowing consistency so that it kind of is a thicker wash than normally what the we've been doing so far with the paint and just take your time the biggest thing about freehanding tattoos um especially because in this way they're a little simple because it's just black ink. You just want to take your time and make sure you sketch out the shape really, really, really good. And then from there you can just fill it in and it's nice and simple. So for lips, there are many ways that you can do these. You can go all sorts of colors and extremes, depending on how you want the lips to look. But the best results I found when doing lips is to, no matter what color you kind of want them, if you want them more natural looking lips, go for a very dark red. If you want, say, your model to look like it's wearing any sort of lipstick, you can stick with any color that you're going to choose for the lipstick so if it's red you know a very vibrant red but the key is in a similar way to tattooing uh freehand you want to have them washed right down so with this one what i did was i washed down some purple because i wanted to go for some purple lips and then after we have the wash in i'll gradually build up the dark tones by adding more wash and then i work up with pinks and some skin tones just to get a more natural look to the lips. And finally, the last part of this was the hair. Now, I have done Vi's hair, I think, three, four times now. And what I found, and especially doing it with this, is that basically, so long as you are going with light hair, what you really want underneath is a very light primer or color. So in this case, it was grey. But because I had a zenithal highlight as well, that would help me later because... Light colors over dark colors are naturally just going to dull down. 
So if they're over grey, they'll look much brighter. And if they're over black, they'll look um, obviously much darker. So in a way, this really, really did save me. But I start very bright. I go from magenta up to pure pink, basically. And what I want to do is um, I want to work in that magenta just to start. And then I went with some violet on the side to kind of give that um, buzz cut hair kind of vibe on the side of her head. And then after that, what I did was um, going around in sort of a ring light as if the hair was a little reflective. I work in kind of some edge highlights and some kind of nice lines on the hair to indicate as if it was shining. And uh, yeah, I guess you don't need me to talk anymore, but just watch how it turns out.
So guys, thank you very much. I'll leave you with some pictures of a finished version of Vibe that I did. And as always, what will we paint next? Thank you.